Here at IPD, one of the most common calls we get about suspension is about shock absorbers and explaining why you would need shock absorbers and what the differences are between shock absorbers. Let's start out with what a shock absorber does and why you might need to replace them. A shock absorber essentially is an item that converts energy through friction into heat to damp the movement of the car. The shock doesn't hold the car up, the shock doesn't hold the car down, it simply keeps it from bouncing up and down as you're going up and down the road. Why would you need to replace a shock? Well, it's pretty much a sealed unit and everything is going to work unless certain things happen. Number one is if the oil leaks out of the shock and you actually get air bubbles going through the mechanism inside, that's going to make the shock not work as well and sometimes it actually will have almost no resistance and therefore you're going to get different levels of resistance to the up and down motion of the car. Otherwise, as long as the oil stays sealed in the shock, it's there forever and it doesn't get dirty because it's a sealed environment. What you do need to keep in mind is just like with engine oil, the oil inside the shock can become worn through time. It breaks down into smaller molecules, those molecules have less resistance going through the valving and the shock will have less and less resistance. That's why you see cars get looser and looser as they get older with the stock shocks on them. So even though your shocks with 80 or 100,000 miles on them may not actually be leaking oil and your mechanic hasn't said, oh they're failed, they need to be replaced, it's guaranteed that they don't work as well as they did when they were new. This is why you may want to consider replacing shocks even if they don't look visually failed. Now everyone's heard about using the old-fashioned bumper test where you bounce up and down on the bumper to see how much the car bounces up and down. And that really doesn't apply to whether or not the oil is worn out on the shock because the amount of energy you're imparting to the suspension there is so small compared to the amount of energy the car imparts to the suspension while you're going down the road that it doesn't really apply. Now if the oil has come out of your shock and you have no damping left at all, then bouncing up and down on the bumper will show that and the car will just keep bouncing longer than it should. That doesn't apply to how the car works while you're going down the road. That is a quicker motion in shorter strokes. Shocks and struts come in a couple different varieties. Mainly there's going to be an oil charged versus a gas charged. Now your Volvo most of the time would come with a oil charged, some come with a gas charged, and Ken's going to talk about a couple of the differences between those two. As we mentioned, what a shock does is it converts that motion into heat through the valving and the oil. Now, obviously the heat will, in the long run, break down the oil. The other thing that makes a shock fade during usage is if you get air bubbles suspended in the oil, the air bubbles as they're going through the valves obviously have much less resistance than the oil will. By pressurizing the oil with the gas charge, you make the oil less prone to foaming and get more consistent performance from the shock absorber. Now a couple different options that we have here are going to be based on quality products that we've tested and used for a long time. Now first what you'll find is this. This is a Saks or Bogue. These are the same brand and these were stock on many Volvo models all the way back into the 240 series and up into the newer models as well. Now these come in a couple different varieties but mainly you're going to find an automatic which is a hydraulic and oil charged and they also make a turbo gas or advantage which is going to be a gas charged. And that's just a basic rundown of it. Now past that we also carry Bilsteins and there's a couple different options on these ones whether you go with a gas charged touring class or more sporty and heavy duty and we also offer a couple varieties of conies. One of the questions we get all the time from customers when they call is which shock is the best for my car and the true answer is there is no best. Really shock absorbers are like music. Everyone's idea of how their car should feel over the bumps is different. Volvos traditionally were set up as a more luxurious or soft riding car and if you want to keep that kind of feel and keep the car with its showroom feel, you're going to opt for a softer and more OE grade shock. Whereas some people may wish to stiffen the ride of the car to change its ride characteristics and improve its performance. Additionally, if you want to do something like lower your car and put sport springs on, you're going to want something that's going to be able to control the movement of that stiffer spring. So in that case, you'd want something like our Bilstein HD or a Kony or something like that. As Ken mentioned, there's different styles of ride based on different tastes and how you want the car to behave and how you want the car to feel. So if you just want the car to be back to how it was and working correctly, consider an oil charge, something like a Saks Bogue. And now, on the other hand, if you want something more sporting and you want it to feel a little bit more like maybe one of its German cousins, like a BMW or Mercedes from the factory, something like a Bilstein or a Kony Sport is going to be your better choice by far. Now which one's right for you? That depends upon you. 
This is just a very basic rundown of what a shock does and how to choose the right one for you. For more detailed information, fitments, prices, all that, you can always give us a call or check our website at ipdusa.com.